Hello and welcome. This time we want to group a little bit our outputs, our results. Okay? Up to now in my student list there were only uh, six, seven people. Yeah. So I prepared a little something. I now expanded the list of students so that we can group them. It's not necessary to make a group of two people. Yeah. We want to have a group of our students. So. I prepared a little something, I show you, okay, so look at that, look at that. Here we have now a bunch of students, 42 students. Let's say these 42 students are all new yeah, and they are starting in our school. Okay, 42 students in our school, we have to divide them into three classes. Yeah? So, what I'm going to do is I add an extra table with classes, okay? And I want to assign each student to a class, okay? So, well, we want to do reverence, okay? However, here I do have some uh, problem, okay? I do have some problem because I don't know how many students are in one class, so it's a bad idea to let the class point to the students because I don't know how much they are. Yeah, And I either do not know if one student is maybe in only one class and one student may also be able to attend in two classes, yeah? like a curse system or something like this. Then it's in one, in one topic it's in this class, he's in this, he or she is in this class, in the other topic in the another class. Yeah? So it might also be necessary to assign a student to more than one class. So also this is not, I have an N to M relationship here somehow. Okay? How to solve this? Yeah? I have a table of students, I have a table of classes, I make a third table where I only write in the pairs. Okay? Which student in which class? So I can add as many students to as many classes as I like. Yeah. So I have a combination table, let's say it. Yeah. We're going to, to make this now. Okay, we're going to make this now. So I make a class table. I've prepared this. Took. I create a table. If it not exists, it's called my class list. Class list have must have a name and a room, okay, where the class is located, yeah? and the name should be the primary key, and the classroom should also should also be unique, because if two classes in one room, it's not working. Okay, so back, that's it. Yeah? I open now three classes. Yeah? I open now three classes. One class is called. One H A H M B A. One class is called one B H M B A. One class is called one A H M B I. Okay, and they all have different rooms assigned. Yeah. So that's it. And now I'm adding my class assignment table. Okay, how does this look like? like this. Create table if not exists. Uh, I have an assignment ID. I don't really care about the ID. Primary key, yeah, auto increment. Yeah. And I assign a student. This is a foreign key to the student list student ID. I assign this student to yeah, foreign key. And I assign a class to it. So I have a pair of student and class. And the student and the class are both foreign keys the corresponding field in the tables. Back. There it is. Yeah. The only thing I need to do is to assign the students now. I have 42 students, so I assign 42 to the different classes. Student number one will be in 1A. Student number two is B is will be in 1A. And so on. Yeah. So book. That's it. Yeah. Let's have a look on our assignment, how this looks like. Great. Yeah. 
You see? Very. The overview is given. <laughs> this was our first step to chaos, right? We have... And it's just 42. Yeah? In our school, there are 1800. Yeah? So we need to group this somehow. We need to find out who is in which class and there are just numbers and so on. Hmm. Not that easy, right? How to do this? How to do this? Let's say I want to count how many people are in the 1AA. Yeah? Then I can simply use this statement. Select count of assigned students yeah, from class assignment where assigned class is this class. Enter 15. Okay? In the 1AA, 15 persons are inside. I make now the same request with the 1B. This is working. What I've done now. Was Müller? Huh? I don't know. Copy, paste. Not working, of course, elect. I have to copy the whole thing. Huh? Select. Also 15. Huh? In the 1B are also 15. Okay, let's look what's in the 1HI. 12. Only 12. Okay, so this is the case. Huh? I used three requests i even made typos so it took quite a lot of time it would be nice to have a list where i get this grouped somehow yeah? how is this working yeah? i make a select yeah? assign class count assign student yeah? if i do it like this i just get stupid things. Yeah? I get the first class, which is by accident inside, and I get the count of the total number of students. So, I can use group by, and now assign class. Okay, Now it's grouped this statement here, this count. Yeah? This is now grouped by the assigned class. So for every assigned class, it will do a different count. Okay. Let's see what the result is. Aha! 1A, A, 15, 1AI, 12, 1B, one request, and I have an overview. Okay. One request, I have an overview. Group by. Working pretty smooth. Working pretty smooth. Yeah. So, let's have a look at this request here. What does this mean? Yeah. Select from class assignment, assign class. Yeah. And then, the state diff. This is calculating the difference between the current date and the born date of the students yeah, in days. Okay. So this is the age of the student in days. Okay. Divided by 365.25, so one year. Yeah. This is the age of the student in years. And from this, I do the average. So I want to have the average age of each student in the class. I want to see if there is an old class or a young class. Yeah? This SH is quite important. Yeah? So 
I take them from student list, I make a join with the class assignment, yeah, and I join this where the student list and student ID is class assignment and assignment student, yeah, where these two things match. And I group them by the assignment of the class. So this should actually do the trick. Here we see. Here are average, here are some h average values. Yeah. Luckily, I've written here the s statement. Yeah. Because if I'm not writing this, I'm now using the same request but without this s. s. You see, woo, there is a bunch of title, a huge title. Use as. Yeah. Use as. Yeah, this is the average class. Yeah. Grouped by this assigned class. This group by is nice. Gives quite a lot of overview. One single, one single request gives quite an overview. Now, is this, is this the correct value here we are reading? Is this the correct value? We don't know. What is? Is this correct? 15.6 years? We can use this request here. Select student forename, student surname, assign class from the corresponding tables. Yeah. This here is again the age. Yeah. And I select this from student list, join class assignment on where this is the same and where I only want to have this from the 1A HMBA. So I'm I want to have this checked. Yeah. Order by student list to ensure name as sending. So I want to have this alphabetically ordered. Let's see what the result is. Okay. Here we have the students of our one AHP and here we have the ages. Let's see how many students there are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Past yeah, 15, as we have seen here, yeah, 15, this is working out. Now let's have a look at the age. I will call my small calculator and see. I'll make 16.100 plus 15.5784 plus 15.5647 plus oh, it takes a while this is the sum divided by 15 15.718 it's the same. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. Fine for me. I believe the others. Would be too much effort to type all this in. So this is working, actually. By the way, we now learn a new thing here. Dative. Yeah. Group by. This is how this is working. Okay. Next time we are going to talk about we want to group where not all inside a class but only some. Okay. To, to, we want to only output if a group has a certain thing. Yeah. If a group has an average value above something or something like this. Yeah. Well, see, this is not that easy. Yeah. We use a new thing. Yeah. For this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.